the midfielders, Caicedo, Enzo, Lavia. The Caicedo, the Caicedo thing is there. Lavia looks good. The Enzo question is a bit mad. The Enzo question definitely is a little bit of a, a conversation starter here because Enzo did this last season under Pochettino and a lot of Chelsea fans were calling out Pochettino for setting him up in this way and not having him play to his strengths. And there was a bit of a conversation. There was a bit of a backwards and forwards on Football Terrace this morning where um, Hussam came for a lot of uh, Chelsea fans and then uh, Chez came in and basically uh, said, no, he's absolutely lying. He's not telling the truth at all. So let's have a listen here. And look, we all know agendas can be pushed hard by Hussam at the best of times. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Cool. Okay. It's a commentary channel, brother. It's not just one team focus, but anyways, we move. Let's see what was said. It was like, Hussam called Liverpool dreadful and he called United dreadful on, on Friday. Same energy. The problem is, Poch last season played Enzo on the 10 one time. You all came here and you shat on him for an hour straight and you blamed him for the result. And you said... It wasn't one time. It wasn't one time. It wasn't one time. No, no, it's your wrong. It wasn't one time. Let him speak. Let him speak. Let him speak. Please let people finish their points. Can I just get two minutes? Thank you very much. Anyway. So when Enzo played, when Poch played Enzo on the 10, like, he's not a 10, he's a dictator of tempo. You should put him deeper and he should do this and he should do that. And blah, 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 blah. In Kuko on the left as well today. And, and it's just the problem I have is the following. You guys need to choose a pathway now as Chelsea fans. Are you going to sit up here and realize that this is some long-term shit where you'll be good two years from now? Or are you going to continue in the delusion because there's no longer Abramovich era, no longer Abramovich players, no longer Abramovich type of results. You're not going to get results in the short term. And the type of stuff that happened today is going to happen again and again and again. Last season, you didn't give the grace to Pochettino when Jackson was missing chances. So why should you give today Mareska the, the praise when Jackson's missing chances? Sure. At the, you can hold your head all you want. The first six months of last season, Jackson, 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 Jackson was compared to Lunia than Hoyland. Jackson was a mean. Well, all of a sudden now you want to go like, oh, Jackson missed two chances. No, and how many times last season did Jackson miss chances? Last season, in the three games, Chelsea played against City. You were better than them in the FA Cup. You were better than them at the Etihad. You were better than them at Stamford Bridge. And you were unlucky to not win all three games last season. So you need to understand that this is a process that will take a long time. And even if there is light at the end of the tunnel, the light comes two years from now. It doesn't come now. Because you have not signed any player that's life-changing. There's three good players at Chelsea. And i say that again. Palmer, Caicedo, and Gusto. Don't mention Rich James because he's in a relationship with the nurse. The others are all. If buts, maybes. If this happens, if that happens. And Enzo proved it again today. It's not that we're ganging up on Enzo as a player. We're talking about this is your second full season, bro. Like it's, you played already six months. You played another season. This is your full season now. And you've been made vice captain, which means because Rich James is always injured. Essentially, you're the captain. So you have to deliver this season. All these just giving people chances out. You, you didn't give the people, other people grace like this. So just keep the same energy. It's I'm going to let I'm going to let you. I don't even know what Enzo at this point. I don't know where he plays best. I don't know what his actual role is. Make him vice captain. Maybe that's PR. Playing him nonstop. Okay, they're playing him in 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 this in this eleven here, trying to make him work. Okay, cool. But if Pochettino did this last season and Chelsea fans were not happy with it, why would they be happy with it now? Now, there is a point to be made here where if they keep doing the same thing, then yes, there's going to be questions of Mariska, Mariska saying, bro, you, you're doing the same thing that Pochettino did we hated him for it. Why are you continually doing the exact same thing now when it ain't working? So Hassan's whole point is you cussed the, uh, Pochettino out for doing the exact same thing, but now you're saying, oh, it's okay, give it time, give it this, give it that. It's not that uh, Enzo just come in now and he's playing him in this number eight or number 10 or whatever he is. It's that he's been there for, what, a season and a half, two years now properly, and it's still unknown where his best position is. And if it is going to be in this deep lying playmaker as a six, we've got Caicedo and Lavia there. So what do you do? Do you have to drop one, put Palmer in the middle, maybe putting Kunku in the middle or something? I don't know. I, I'm not a, a tactico. You, know, you all know that. It's um, it's probably a bit early to be saying, you know, Mariska, what are you doing? But definitely if he's going to keep doing the exact same thing, then yeah, there's question marks to be to be had. Now, let's uh, Chez. Uh, legend has it he's always landing his points because every time he speaks he tries to make a point and then someone counters his point or says something contrary to what he's saying he will say no no you didn't let me finish land my point let me land my point and he, he will say enough things where he's just confused you and then you just move on to the next thing you just Chase lied response. you just lied completely there yeah, of course. Uh, the middle, middle so the this second part of the season this is yeah. one game this is, by the way I don't want number actually one time we deal with him we deal with him 
What we'll do is we'll jump on the streams, talk in riddles, nice. rhyme, talk a little waffle, add a few lies in there, and then say a statement at the end that sounds and makes sense, and then goes with it. The manager said one game. Potter's doing it four games. He played chill at left wing four games. The systematic errors in Potter's system was why a lot of people wanted him out. So I wasn't one of those people. The I wasn't interrupt me. I didn't interrupt you. I wasn't one of those people who was like. I wasn't one of those people who said yes. Potch out in the very beginning. And the, point is, the point is, last season, the first time, the first time that Potch yeah, ended up the team, the first time, you came here and shot off. Guys, 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 please, game. please, guys, sorry, oh. let me just jump oh, in, please. Please let me let change. Guys, guys, there's a lot of a song. Can we please let people finish and then I'll direct it to somebody else just so that we're not all talking over each other because I'm going to let Chez finish yeah, and then I want to hear what CB's got to say. Go on, Chez. What I'm saying to Sam is his points are very, very generalised. He's been one game of what we just watched, which wasn't a terrible match. We got slaughtered by Man City. They took us apart at home. And as I'm sitting here going, look what Poch did. Look what Mareska did. It's very similar. Don't. It's going to take two years. What the hell are you talking about? It's been one game where the manager didn't want to change too much in the game. He's put Enzo 10, which we all disagree with, by the way. No one's going to sit and defend it. It didn't work. So if he does it the game after next, and the game after next, then we'll be with you and say he needs to change it up. It's as simple as that. But I'm not looking at this game. I'm going to make mad statements, mad judgments. You're talking about two years from now. It's been one game. We were playing I about. I don't make a mad statement either. I, I think it, the only thing I would say before I go CB is this. I get it's one game. And if you listen to what I said in my opening monologue, I think there were some really positive things for Chelsea today. Lavia being one, and I thought he looked amazing as an example. Bears. The only thing I would say is this. As a Man United fan, I know that Scott McTominay can't play as DM. So if we get a new manager tomorrow and in the first game he plays him in DM, I don't care about his system. McTominay's not a fucking DM. And I think the issue that I, one thing I would say is this, is that it isn't throwing Moresca or Enzo, you've got to be careful when you say their names now, um, under the bus to say, eight, don't, do, don't, don't, don't do that again, because irrespective of other problems with the team today in terms of teething issues and everything else. But you all know as well as I do, Enzo is never going to be an effective number 10 in any capacity. And the biggest mistake he made, you guys talk about how he was meant to you know, help put more bodies in the middle. He wasn't. He was pushing so far up. He was being marked out of the game by their centre-backs. He didn't know where to position himself. And all I'm, I think it's fair criticism. What I do agree with, though, with Chairs is throwing the manager under the bus after making this mistake game week one would be ridiculous. CB. Yeah, it's mad to do it on the first game. It's a bit, how's it going? But definitely to say if he keeps doing it non-stop and it's like, okay, we know he's not a 10. We know he's not good in the eight. Why is he continuously playing him in these positions? If it's strictly just to have him on the pitch, you might as well not have him on there because it ain't working. It's not going to work in their favor. It, it it looks like a headless chicken, some will say. He's not working. He's not performing. He looks a bit lost. But in saying that, I don't think he's a bad player, but there's definitely something that is a bit um, it's a bit funny happening there. Let's see what uh, CB uh, says because he's um, uh, not happy. Let's just hear what he has to say and then... We'll, uh, we'll wrap things up. Um, what was your thoughts on today's performance overall by Chelsea? And uh, yeah, I'd love to get your take on that, mate. The performance today, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm shaking in anger. I'm Steven. I've spent the, the, the past 2024 20, being gaslighted by all the clear light cuts. They're all cuts, including a couple of people in the panel here that hypotheticals. If this, if this, if it rains this day, if there's rainbows this day, maybe the system, the system, all, for all of this waffle. I look at our transfer window. We didn't improve on any single player that we've signed. A baby Pedro Neto, that's a good one. He's injury prone. I got other ones. And then when. But at least you sign players. I've seen Matt Holsey in the chat, fraud sports groups out. We haven't signed not one player, bro. Even the goalkeeper we're apparently shooing to sign still hasn't signed for us. So Liverpool in the deep right now. When he gets injured, it's going to be, oh, when he comes back, when he's fit again, when is all of this. I've seen, a, I saw this team put four past Man City at this at exact same feet fixture last year. We, we also scored a goal against um, the, the Etihad. We dominated at Wembley. We didn't win the game. Ultimately, no one talks about us dominating the game. We lost. Same again today. I'm looking at the system, and it's I've saw this throughout the whole preseason because the only win we had at preseason was against Club America, which is a Mexican team that I'm not really mm. familiar with. I don't know if you That's guys are. I don't, I don't well. do them type of football manager saves. I do the top five league. We only had one win, and I was seeing a lot of four-play football. Four play, edging, ooh, four play, no penetration. It's the same again today. I'm not seeing anything that really our biggest strengths as Chelsea last season was we put the goal in the we put the ball in the back of the net. No matter you say what you want about us defensively, we put the ball in the back of the net. So now I've looked at our preseason, I've assessed our struggling to break down teams. Pass, 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 pass. Nothing's going on, no clear cut chances are being made. I'm looking at the situation here. There's no improvement. You guys have criticised um, Pochettino when it came to players being out of position. I saw Gusto playing in the 10, basically, in midfield today. I saw Enzo as second striker. I'm seeing all of these things. I saw Fofana uh, against Inter Milan, box-to-box -box midfield. I'm seeing all of these things. Why are we not holding Pochettino accountable for it? I mean, um, Mariska accountable the same way we hold Pochettino. <laughs> Poch is still living in their heads, man. It's still fresh. Pochettino accountable for it. In terms of Enzo Fernandez, if I'm being honest, I said this from the very beginning. They accused me of having an agenda. 
He's not who you guys say he is. Every week there's something new. Oh, play him deeper. Oh, play him DM. Oh, he's not a DM. He shouldn't see it. Oh, let him free roam. Oh, put him up the further up the pitch. The guy, they compare him to Tony Cruz, this fan base. They compare him to Tony Cruz. <laughs> what? This is the fan base we have to deal with constantly. Oh, yeah, we're going to be in the... Another thing that's really irritating me is the top four talk. Since when, as Chelsea, do we go into a season demanding top four? Oh, yeah, we need to finish top four. If we don't finish top four, top four, we've turned into Wenger's Arsenal. And not everyone is, is just glossing by it. They're going to do the Yao Felix, here we go, and it's going to distract everyone. But what does Yao Felix coming into the team actually change? He, does, does he start? Is he, is he creative? Does he finish chances? What exactly does he do that Pedro Neto, who they signed, can't do? Nkunku can't do. Palmer can't do. Well, I, look at, I look at Neto, I look at Palmer. Just to say that there's a lot of players now. Felix coming into attacking role as well. Ultimately, Enzo's got to drop out of this 11, man. He has to. Now, I don't know where they play all these players. Do they play Neto on the left, Palmer on the right? Do they play Jackson up front or Nkunku? Or do they play Felix behind? Do they play Nkunku with Caicedo and Lavia as like a 10 or something? Move someone a bit further up. Make Caicedo a DM, make Lavia a roaming 8 or something. I have no idea what Maresca does here, but they've got too many players in these positions where they don't know what they're doing at the moment, and it's making everyone sort of like, not lose their heads, but they're confused. One side says, no, we should stick with this because we trust Maresca. It'll be good. And another says, this is not working. Why are you sticking with this when we saw it didn't work last season at all? Players are still playing in these positions that they're not well suited for. And we're going to have the same problems again. It's a bit peak. It's a bit peak. Uh, pretty sure Cover ran past 11 mil and then ran past another, uh, sorry, 100 mil and ran past another 100 mil and then banged the goal. Yeah, Kovacic going in for the goal was... um was interesting. Uh, went past Caicedo, went past Enzo, and then hit that so sweetly into the back of the net. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. You congested the middle so they won't concede a lot. But they're going forward. That's the thing. Going forward is the question mark here. Like, you've already got Caicedo. You've got Lavia. You, you need Enzo who's going to, you know, dictate the play or set the tempo or whatever. Setting the tempo and stuff is done from the defensive side, if I'm not mistaken. I think I've seen a lot of people say deep line playmaker, like Pilo, for example. He's Pilo gets the ball. I'm not comparing the two, by the way. I'm just a player that I, I recognize as a deep line playmaker. Gets the ball from deep, looks up, pings a pass, can see things happening, through balls, etc., etc. Go here, go there, da da da. If Enzo's that player, he can't be doing what he's doing from that high up the pitch. He's got to be a little bit, a bit further back, but then you sacrifice that section between that DM and the forward line. It's like, well, what do you do there? What do you do? Do you have to change your formation, change your system around? Anyways, that's for um, that's for Maresca to to sort out here. Definitely not um something I want to divulge in uh because it, divulge is the right word. Whatever. <laughs>